about three years ago okay where i was having a lot of controversies came on people lied said a lot of things and so many things went so i defended myself i apologized i begged four times i went to kneel down to beg this is not so hard to explain myself yeah and everything tonight god have spoken that is a night of miracles and the evening has come brothers and sisters in christ let's make welcome the set man over the remnant christian nation the father of african revival apostle aroma osai Hallelujah. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. How are you today? Hope you had a very nice rest field weekend. Uh, thank you very much for being there. I'm not going to speak so much on this video. Um, in this video, rather, I will just uh, play the video and uh, maybe say one or two things at the end of the video. This is Apostle Michael Oroko. Uh, it is it is a common knowledge that Apostle Michael Oroko fell out with his spiritual father and and uh, a lot of people have been speculating and uh, videos have been made I also made about two or three videos on that and also i asked a lot of questions in the video who did what what happened and when arome came out also to talk about his spiritual son whom he raised went about lying against him and insulting him and not respecting him and he was told about it and when he learned that he had apostle adome known about it he came and asked for a release now he he didn't mention anybody's name but all of us almost all of us almost everyone you know looked at michael oroko that there was no other person that that uh description could have fitted if not apostle michael oroko and mind you if you have or you know already watched those videos i did uh they are falling out never took anything away from the two of them but i wanted to listen to michael oroko the pains that he said he had and probably still has till today over the way things were handled and what happened that led to him leaving rcn this is packed in this video and i want you to watch listen in you know with intent and put down your comments at the comment section i'll be seeing you at the end of the video reviewing You are welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. Have you ever felt discouraged at any time and then how do you pull yourself up? Yes, so that somebody would learn, maybe i just give you three real life situations and I'll make it very fast. But before I say that, I say that. I came, I've come to realize in my life that the lessons I never forget mm -hmm. are the ones I learned in difficult times. Mm -hmm. Most of the mm -hmm. things I learned mm -hmm. in the place of excitement, joy, I've forgotten them. But most of the difficult times of my life, I can recite them. They are still teaching me to date. So I've come to that point where I still thank God for the difficulties in life. First one is um, when my mom died. That was in 2010, 13 years ago. I loved God, passionate, praying, you know, trusting God that everything was possible. Mm -hmm. In fact, those were the times when we were going from churches to churches, preaching, doing all forms of choreography and everything. And then my mom that I knew to have been an intercessor all her life, suddenly fell sick briefly and died. Mm -hmm. It so broke me that I was so bitter with God. Mm -hmm. I went back into the world. To me, I wanted to do something that we pay God. Mm. Went into alcoholism, started clubbing, and it was a terrible one year from 2010 to 2011. And I said, I gave this illustration to say something. There are certain discouragements you will get into mm. that you can't help yourself. God will send somebody else to help to you. help you. For that phase of my life, God sent somebody to pull me out. Mm. I'm ever grateful for it. Mm. The second discouragement was in 2017 when my only brother died. Mm. Uh, mm. I did all the praying, I did all the fasting, I sowed seeds, I brought men of God to pray for him. I was fasting throughout the period. He still died. It was like an arrow thrust into my soul. I wept for months. 
I wept. It broke me. The scriptures didn't make sense. Mm. Nothing made sense to me. And I would go to lonely places and just wept. Played some songs and I would just be crying. Because that was the only thing I could do. Mm -hmm. But God in his benevolence began to encounter me again. And it was a fresh encounter altogether. The energy and passion yes, with which I drive today yes, was gotten from that encounter. Oh wow. You know, sometimes when we push the way we push, some mm -hmm. people look at us, they think it's ambition. Okay. Some people look at us, they think it's zeal, it's it's a fleshly zeal yeah. or it's desire yeah. for no. That the death of my brother took everything from me. So from that period, what I came out from that encounter with is that all I live for is one thing to please God and to do the will of God and to get back at the devil. Yeah. So I want to win as much souls I can as I can win per day. Okay. I want to see thousands delivered as much as possible. I don't want to hear anybody who fell sick and died. Mm. So something, man, a holy vexation mm -hmm. was activated in my spirit. So the second discouragement, I came out by the mercy of God and encounters. And it's because I was honest to God. In my brokenness, I told him I was disappointed. I told him I was pained. I kept weeping. But he reached into the very deep recesses of my soul and he delivered me. The third one happened about three years ago. Okay. Where I was having a lot of controversies came up. People lied, said a lot of things. And so many things went sour. I defended myself. I apologized. I begged. Four times I went to kneel down to beg. This is not so hard to explain myself. Yeah. And everything. And things boomeranged. And I sat down. I said, in the course of this service. Now, when my brother died in 2017. Yeah. My brother died on the 18th. On the 19th, I still went back to the Bible school to do a partition. <laughs> that would give you an idea of the level of service. <laughs> I didn't receive the grace because God was biased. My heart was genuine and mm -hmm. I served it all my life. Mm. My brother died. I was broken. I didn't even shower. I was the one who went to take him to the mortuary because died around 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then I returned back the next day to still do impartation because that week I was the one teaching the Bible school. In fact, he was in coma for five days. All through the time he was in coma, I was teaching from morning to evening. I would go to the hospital in the night, sleep in the hospital, come back in the morning. <sighs> Just to give you an idea, the level of commitment and service. The same me is the one everybody is lying against, everybody is talking against. I will go, they will say this, I will go and need an apologize. <laughs> I will be forgiven. <laughs> they will say another one, I will go and need an apology. And it continued like that until everything boom around. If I had my powers, I wouldn't mm -hmm. have wanted it to go that way. Yeah. I became so bitter, not with the man of God, but with the whole people around. What have I done to you? I so see to all of you. Yeah. I respect all of you. And yeah. every day, everybody wants me to go down. What did I do? It broke me so much that a people you call brothers and family, you are talking to somebody, they raise a, a situation. You are explaining your own part. They record it. They go and edit it, take to authority. And this is what you said. <laughs> ah. I said, what kind of, is this church? Is this the house of God? Oh, God. So, it pierced into me. In fact, there was a time it started affecting my my messages until the Holy Ghost started to tell me your priesthood will be corrupt. Mm. He said, This is revival. Mm. And one of the things that happened in revival is separation. Mm. And he started showing me scriptures. How Paul and Barnabas separated. How they so it's either persecution will separate you, or disagreement will separate you, or the Holy Ghost himself will come and say, Separate unto me. But by all means, there must be separation for revival to happen. Hmm. Paul and Barnabas argued because of John Mark. Not because they had problem, but John Mark was the issue. Mm -hmm. In the Jerusalem church, persecution scattered them. That yes. was how Philip went to Samaria. Yes, sir. And in the church in Antioch, the Holy Ghost himself came and said, Separate unto me, Paul and Barnabas. He says, so that the many expressions mm -hmm. of the graces that are needed for that revival can find expression. So, it's not a personal thing. He's a, this is a man of God. He loves you. I've used him to, to impart your life. You are a servant of God. You love him. You honor him. But it's a necessity for the work of God to spread. So mm -hmm. there's nothing personal about it. The problem is the people who allow themselves to be used of the devil. Yeah. They would have lost so much from God because they have allowed bitterness. They have allowed pride. They have yeah. allowed all sorts of things yeah. to enter into them. And so I now eventually began to pray. 
because I know we are all one in the body of Christ. But that's one very serious issue. And you know the worst part? You yeah. can't explain yourself in these things. Yeah. Hey. Because the more you talk, the more you are wrong. Yes. So we just kneel down and just... <laughs> you just pray, you <laughs> just cry, and you just ask the Lord to help you. Ah, it's like we are living parallel lives on another side. <laughs> uh, no, no. And then the set man is put in a tight corner. Yeah. Everybody is saying all sorts of things. And these things are not true. And they said, man, or they are taking out my of father. context. In this case, they are taking out of context. <laughs> and then okay. you are watching. You, there's nothing. You just feel the pains. You just have to endure the pains. I mean, in our, in our own situation, they will, you, you are allowed to raise your hand, permission to speak. It will be like denied. <laughs> <laughs> so you can. So, uh, well, anyway. Thank you, sir. I mean, you've done this is confession that you have done, yes, sir. Without knowing this is full blow confession yeah, that you've done, yes, sir. Um, hello, uh, thank you for being there. If you are still here now, I want to say thank you very much. I appreciate you. Now, the fact, first and foremost, I want to plead that you please share this video and uh, like it, put down your comment section. Don't forget that. Now, first and foremost, I want to say that what Oroko here said is a common thing in the church, very common and normal in the church. And the kind of relationship that Arome had with Oroko and how he a kind of almost was singing his praise, not singing his praise in, in a way that was bad, but he was so proud of the guy and was not ashamed to tell people how much he loved the guy and how much of himself he believes has been a replicated in Michael Oro section so that people people this is you know this young man he's Uropo. So yesterday somebody got your recording and, and sent to me and said who is this from from UK say who is this young man says my son said, oh no wonder now the point is how were you listening to the message because my spirit you have inherited it what did you do Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. I I came here in 2014 March. When I <laughs> difficult to stop close. <laughs> now I'm not saying this thing because I want to justify those who are wicked in the church. See, I can guarantee you that this is almost in every church. Almost in every church. People are so wicked to want to bring down anybody that is well spoken of by the set person. Now, the last, I think the last straw that probably broke the camel's back might be their meeting in Ghana. That, which probably was the first international outing that Oroko, you know, went with his father in the Lord, Arome Osai, where Arome introduced him as one of his finest. In a moment of time, can you celebrate one of my finest? to take us forward. Apostle Michael Oroko. Now, we know that there were people who were in the ministry before uh, Oroko came. So there could be somebody in the mix who probably didn't like it, who probably was like this one came yesterday and would he usurp, you know, us that have been here. We have been with the, uh, you know, apostle through thick and thin when nothing was happening, when nobody knew him, we have been with him, we have been the foundation of this place. Now, well, anyway, I'm not taking it just completely because Oroko said it. I'm just trying to uh, kind of relate with what he said that it is not out of order for him to say it because I know by knowing that things like that are very possible in the church and that makes you to understand that it is not everyone you see that wears color that looks gentle and quiet that probably can speak in tongue and open the Bible to preach from the Bible actually not everybody that does all these things I have listed that is a Christian Christianity if Christianity doesn't you know change who you are if Christianity has not affected that Adamic nature of selfishness of self you know projection and the self uh, 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 unnecessary self estimation then you are not a Christian yet all right the rest guys may come out to they you know they may not speak we may not hear them speak 
Now, nah, but are we going to say that Oroko probably is exaggerating things here? I really do not think so. And I don't want to say uh, I know for sure that he is not lying or he is saying the truth. But all I'm saying is that what he's saying is not out of place. It happens almost in every church. Almost in every church. Now, in many churches, you have so-called junior pastors that can kill because, you know, out of jealousy, against anybody that they feel or they perceive is more favored by the set man right but the question i ask is the people that do it, that that do these things when will they repent because their repentance will not just be normal going to god and say god i'm sorry now wickedness like this that is supposed to be what we call proper restitution what we you know going to the person that you lied to that i lied against this person and calling the person you lied against to confess to him that you have done this wickedness against him and we know that not so many people does you know do this all right so um the the young man you know invoked emotions in the inside of me while he was speaking not just because of this but the things that he has gone through in life very close to you then you will understand the pain and the agony that death brings and you know talking about his own service and commitment even in the face of trials in the face of such hard challenges in life and you know and things like this came up it is quite unfortunate we don't we are not supposed to see this kind of a thing in the church now but mind you that this thing started even with the apostles have you forgotten that james and john were also interested in being the right hand men of christ jesus to the point that their mother even came to jesus and said grant that two of my sons will sit one at your right hand side and the other at the left and the bible said that these things did not go down well with the rest of the apostles so these things it has been there it has been there but the good thing about the apostles was that jesus was able to build them so them no 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 it must not be found amongst you the kings of the gentiles lord it over them but such must not be found among you there will be no need for you to drag for position if you are my servants now because anybody that wants to lead the people must be a servant leader anybody that wants to be exalted must first and foremost abase himself humble himself and sir from service you are lifted and you will see that when the apostles after jesus you know uh went to heaven and the spirit of god came upon the disciples and all of them began to serve that was when we started hearing the fame and the you know the prowess of the apostles they served people like brother stephen served the table and the spirit of god came upon him to the point that he forgot about serving the table you know and went out to the field so service elevates people service brings people up service in righteousness but i really don't understand why this kind of a thing will be in the church to, to the point that somebody will be saying that he was lied against and they came purportedly to make peace you know to tell him what the apostle has said and they will record him and they did it cut out things i know that see in such a case in such a, in such a situation somebody who is very wicked can come and will want to incite you to speak angrily even though that yeah I, i'm innocent of this why is i supposed to believe in all this I, I, don't, I don't i don't like all this nonsense now there's a possibility that if what he said happened they edited and deleted all the places where he spoke good about the apostle and they brought forward where he was angry he is a human being and so they presented to him and the man will listen to it and will be like me me you know so i pray that the lord himself will uh, you know do something uh you know in their midst but take nothing away from them that they went their separate ways does not take anything away from them i just hope that there is no animosity in their heart i just hope that there is no malice in their heart like he rightly mentioned but the apostle barnabas and uh, apostle paul they had disagreements and they both went their separate ways and john mark who happened to be the 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 reason for their disagreements later in paul's ministry paul asked for john mark to be sent to him because he was useful to him in ministry and that that explains to me that whatever happened in that time was settled you know amicably and just that they had to move their separate ways because barnabas went with john mark and paul went with silas unfortunately we we don't know so much about barnabas 
after that separation because it was like brother luke who took down the acts the, the the you know the actions of the holy spirit through the apostles seem to have stayed more with apostle paul than any other of the apostles well anyway brethren that is it um i owe you this also update because i've done videos on this matter and since this is the first time that Oroko is clearly stating what really happened clearly even though that he didn't he didn't give out much in details but he he has told you what truly happened why he left i know that he had a beef with Aru arome but that the, the you know the man was put in a very you know precarious position where it was only god that could have probably opened the man's eyes and make him know the truth let's know what you think about it in the comment section i'll be seeing the next video till then from me to you shalom